Good morning. We are Eau Claire Baptist Church, and we're glad that you're here with us today, and I invite you now to join our praise team as we sing our God is an Awesome God. leading us in worship. Welcome today. Could we please take a moment to bow as we pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day of worship you've given us. And Lord, we do gather together to declare that indeed our God is an awesome God. And Father, in the midst of every circumstance we face in our lives, in spite of all that we have faced this past week, Lord, and in spite of all the things that we might face in the week to come, Lord, we know as we will read again together from your word in Revelation 4, we know, Lord, that you are seated on the throne. We know that you rule and you reign. We know that nothing catches you by surprise. Lord, we know there's absolutely nothing that you cannot handle on our behalf. And so today, Lord, as your people, we gather together to worship you, to lift your name in praise, to honor you. We ask you to draw near to us as we draw near to you this day. We pray in Jesus' name, and everybody said together, 
Amen. Well, welcome. It's so good to see you here. Uh, so good to have Joe and Sharon back with us. And so for those of you here in person, I welcome you today. For those of you who might be watching us online now or later, we welcome you as well. It's also good to have Amanda back with us so we could broadcast and have the screens as well today. So welcome to you. Uh, just a couple of quick uh, notes about our church uh, life and what's happening. Uh, thank you to those that worked for the barbecue yesterday for the youth fundraiser. And so I understand uh, somewhere around $800 was raised for the youth trip coming up in June uh, to see the Ark in Kentucky. So we're grateful for that. Uh, so appreciate everybody that worked to make that possible and to support the youth fundraiser. So thank you for that. Also want to remind you today at 430, we will have a church council meeting and we will continue our discussion from our last month's council meeting when George Bullard was with us. So we'll be talking about some next steps there. So I invite all of our deacons and our church council leaders to meet with us today at 430. Um, so with that, we will continue our worship. Uh, we'll have this first hymn followed by the children's message, which will be our puppets. And then following that, we'll have a second hymn. So I invite you to stand with us as we sing. It's hymn number 10, How Great Thou Art. Would you stand with us as we worship together? Thank 
you. Let's be seated now. And puppets, it's your turn. That was some sermon today, huh, Skip? Yeah. Hey, Mr. Quimper. What is it, Skip? You know our memory verse in Sunday school today? Hmm. Yeah? What about it? Well, I don't understand something. What's that? Which word? Well, that's simple, Skip. Huh? Which word am I supposed to hide in my heart? Well, what do you mean, Skip? Well, the verse says, I have hidden God's word in my heart so that I will not sin against him. Right. So, which of God's words am I supposed to hide in my heart? <laughs> I'm afraid you're a little mixed up, Skip. That doesn't mean just one word. It means all of his words. All of them? Right. In other words, the verse could go like this. I will remember what God has told me so that I won't sin. Oh, I see. Then, the more I think about what he says, the less I will want to sin. Right. In fact, that's a good way to keep from doing the wrong things. Always be thinking of the things God has said. I will. Thanks, Mr. Quimper. Oh, I almost forgot. My mom told me to ask you to come to dinner. Well, thanks, Skip. I'd love to. Okay, we better hurry. My mom says if we're late, they'll start without us. Thank you, puppets. And it's time now for our next hymn. I invite you to stand as we sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Jesus. 
Becky, and let's be seated. Well, if you have a Bible today, our scripture reading is again from Revelation chapter 4. Uh, so I invite you to follow along in your copy of God's Word. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. We introduced Revelation 4 last Sunday, and so we'll take today to work through the remaining verses uh, from where we left off last week. So Revelation 4, uh, verses 1 through 11, and I invite you to follow along. Uh, the scriptures are in the bulletin as well, so please follow along as I read. Revelation 4, verse 1, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet, speaking with me, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must be take place after these things. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was standing in heaven and one sitting on the throne. And he who was sitting was like a jasper stone and a sardius in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. Around the throne were 24 thrones and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads. Out from the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal and in the center and around the throne four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind the first creature was like a lion and the second creature like a calf the third creature had a face like that of a man and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle and the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And day and night they do not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of your will they existed and were created. And may God bless the reading of his word today. We want to transition to a prayer time this morning, and so we continue to pray for those in our fellowship uh, that are recovering from COVID. Uh, we also lift up your needs before the Lord today. So as we bow together, I invite our ushers to come. And following my prayer, the ushers will receive the offering today. Would you bow with me as we pray? And again, our Lord, we consider it a great privilege to bow before your throne here, Lord, as we stand upon the earth, for we know one day when we stand before you in heaven, we know your word tells us that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so, Lord, today we willingly, submissively bow before you. And Lord, as we gather together in your presence, we are mindful of those from within our congregation who need a special touch from you today, Lord. We are mindful of the many needs within the life of our church. And so, Lord, we bring these needs before you today, trusting you to do what is right and to do what is best. And Lord, during this time of giving today, we pray that you bless both the gift and the giver. And would you hear our prayer now, O Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said together, amen.
Amen. Well, we pick up again today in Revelation 4. And if you look in verse 1, we see a couple of important truths about Revelation 4, where we started our time together in this chapter last week. If you take a look at verse 1, we said last week uh, that John here uses the phrase, after these things. And we spoke last week about how things happen in life, don't they? Things, good things, bad things, joyful things, sorrowful things. We said last week that we have the assurance that because of who God is, we know that our lives can be solid, placed solid on the rock of Christ because He is above all things. We talked about from verses 1 and 2 what we know to be sure and solid in our lives when things happen. We said last week from verse 1 that God's invitation is sure. We see Revelation 4 verse 1 that John saw a door standing open in heaven and this reminds us that God's invitation is indeed open to us. We said last week that God's voice is sure. We read in John or Revelation 4 verse 1 and John writes about the first voice that he heard and so we said together last week that we can have assurance that God's voice is always speaking. And then we said from verse 1, if you look, uh, the Lord Jesus says, Come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. We said last week that when things happen in our lives, we can be assured that God does have a plan, that God's plan is sure even for our lives. And then we left off last week saying that we could find assurance in God's throne, which is where we pick up today in verse 2, when we read that John writes, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven. The Scripture says so much about God's throne so much in fact today that, uh, that we're going to look uh, for the next few minutes at aspects of God's throne that we see in scripture and then next week we will continue talking about God's holiness and what it will mean for us when we, when we ourselves like John one day will stand before God's throne. And so John's vision here that he sees, starting in verse 2, uh, tells us of the glorious throne of God and the majesty of the one who sits on the throne. It would be good for us to be well familiar with Revelation chapter 4 because this without a doubt is the most detailed glimpse of heaven that we see. Now, we all want to go to heaven one day, right? If you do, uh, maybe slip your hand up with me today. We, we all want to go to heaven. We all want to be there one day. And so we would do well to, to study closely Revelation 4. We would do well to understand what John's vision is given to us because one day we will be standing where John is standing in this vision of Revelation 4 verses 1 through 11. And so we see that John is in the Spirit's power in verse 2. He says, immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven. This throne, without a doubt, is a sure symbol of God's authority, knowing that God is ruling and reigning, knowing that, that God is lifted high above the earth. We are 
told about this throne, that this throne is located in the temple in heaven, and we, we can allude from Scripture that, that there's no physical temple in heaven, but a temple surely, as we know from the Old Testament, symbolizes the very presence of God. And I ask you to note uh, in your Bible, Revelation 21, verse 22, which states this, The Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb are indeed the temple. And so the temple symbolizes God's presence. And we know that the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are surely where we will find God's presence. Presence. Notice John says in verse 2 that this temple, or excuse me, this, this throne is standing in heaven. And this posture of standing reminds us that God's sovereign rule is fixed. That His rule is permanent. That His rule is unshakable. And so it is important for us to see this vision of God's immovable throne. And this reveals for us that that God is indeed a permanent, unchanging God who is in complete control of the universe. And so we see in verse 2 that John is called up into God's presence. And I'd like to ask you today a very sincere, uh, soul-searching question. When, When is the last time that you have been in God's presence? I mean, really in His presence. When is the last time that you have been so submissive to God's Spirit that you sense an overwhelming move of God in your life? When is the last time you've you've taken time to focus and taken the opportunity to intently be in the very presence of God? This is where we will spend all eternity for those who know Jesus. And so we are given the opportunity here on the earth to rehearse, to get ready, to practice what it means to be in God's presence. For me, the last time I sincerely felt that I was in the overwhelming presence of God was in late April uh, at the Cove at the Billy Graham Training Center and a pastor out of Brooklyn, New York, uh, Jim Cimbala from the Brooklyn Tabernacle. How many of you heard of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir, by the way? And so it's a blessing to be under the teaching of Pastor Jim Cimbala, who is, by the way, I believe 80 or 81 years old. Don't tell me that God can't do something with you in your older age and so Pastor Jim Cimbal is still full-time pastoring the Brooklyn Tabernacle and and so we were gathered together in the Billy Graham Training Center conference room about 250 folks and um, and and Pastor Cimbal at the end of his message just gave a tremendous altar call And what his altar call was about actually was for parents who were dealing with prodigal sons and daughters. And he invited those pastors in the room and their wives who were dealing with prodigal sons and daughters to just come forward to the altar to pray for their wayward children. And a move of God just swept over the room. A move of God just fell down from heaven. And God's presence stirred the hearts and lives of all those who worshipped before Him. God God can do the very same thing in our lives right here, right now. The the Holy Spirit, John tells us in verse 2 that He was in the Spirit God's Holy Spirit can move in that same way in our lives right here and now. When is the last time you have genuinely, truly been in the presence of the Lord? John gives us a glimpse of what this is like. And so we look together for the next few minutes about 
the throne. Now, let me just remind you, this is the same throne in heaven that you will stand before when you die. When you take your very last breath on the face of this earth, this is the throne before which we all will stand and give an account for our lives. Now, I want to be very clear that I pray that God gives each of us very, very long days on the face of the earth. And some of you are blessed to see that magic number of 80 that Pastor Jim Cimbala has seen himself. Some of you have been blessed already with long years on the face of the earth. So I want to be very clear that I pray that God gives each of us long life and many days on the face of the earth. But the reality is, is that we don't know when our last breath will be. And John assures us in his vision that this is the very same throne before which each of us will stand to give an account for our lives. And look with me first at what John sees on the throne in verses 2 and 3. We have mentioned here that, that John sees God ruling and reigning. Let me ask you to write down in your Bible uh, two different verses of Scripture. And I encourage you to look back at these later today because it will, it will give you the consistency in Scripture about not only what John has seen before God's throne, but if you will note Ezekiel uh, chapter 1, the majority of chapter 1, uh, Ezekiel saw visions of God's throne. Um, also Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, if you want to note that, Isaiah saw visions of God's throne. And then actually a third one in Daniel chapter 7, uh, verses 9 and 10, Daniel saw visions of God's throne. Now, now we all have heard stories uh, in modern day about those that have said they have, uh, they have temporarily died and gone to heaven and have come back. We've all read about those stories. And it is interesting to note here that we read about uh, Daniel's vision of God's throne, Isaiah, and here John's vision. All of these have the same response in that they were, they had a great sense of awe and reverence and even a sense of humility and even some being terrified about their visions of God's throne. And I don't know what you would want to trust in your life more, and I don't certainly doubt anyone who says they've had a heavenly experience, but I would trust the Word of God more over the visions that Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and John have had about God's throne before I would trust what anyone else says about that topic. And so we read in verse 3. Look with me here. And he who was sitting was like a jasper stone and sardius in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. And so if you go back later and read Ezekiel chapter 1, some of this language will sound very familiar. Uh, some of this is symbolic of Ezekiel's vision of God's throne in which Ezekiel uh, notes flashing light and blazing fire and vivid colors. The Bible points out in verse 3 this Jasper, which uh, Revelation 2.11 tells us that Jasper is crystal clear. And so it could be uh, that this is referring to the shining like a diamond, like a bright diamond, diamond uh, recording for us flashing facets of the glory of God, which are brilliantly refracted in all the colors of the spectrum. We have a creative God, amen? We have a creative God that gives for us His glory and His splendor. And it is here that we are reminded, if you want to note Hebrews 12 verse 29, we are reminded of the flashing glorious 
splendorous significance that our God, according to Hebrews 12, 29, that our God is a consuming fire. And John certainly lays this out well for us. Notice in verses 3 and 4, so not only on the throne, but notice with me next what we see around the throne. Uh, Verse 3, we we read together. Notice verse 4, around the throne, there were 24 thrones, and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white garments, and golden crowns on their heads. Now, we could actually do an entire message on verse 4 alone. So there's so much more uh, that we could look into about these 24 thrones that we see in verse 4. But it is around the throne that we see in verse 4. We are introduced to the to the multi-splendored glory of God. And so Uh, We read about this rainbow that is around the throne. And so I remind you of Genesis chapter 9, verses 13 through 17, uh, that tells us that the rainbow there symbolizes God's covenant faithfulness. It symbolizes God's mercy and grace. And, And we understand in in scripture that God's attributes always operate in perfect harmony with one another. Let me give you an example of this. Um, we, we know that, that God at times in scripture is a God of wrath and we know part of, part of Revelation 4 by the way is setting the vision for those things that will happen in Revelation 6 starting in Revelation 6 so all of the, the judgments that are to come Uh, some of which that we are starting to be introduced to maybe even today with world events. And so we know that God's attributes always act in perfect harmony with one another. For example, God's wrath never operates at the expense of God's faithfulness. We know that, that God's judgments never overrule His promises to God's people. Uh, we, we know uh, that God said of the faithful remnant of Israel who feared being swept away in His judgment, Malachi 3 verse 17, uh, one of my favorite books of the Bible, by the way, Malachi, uh, that they will be mine, says the Lord, on the day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. And so we're reminded about God's faithfulness, and these 24 elders, by the way, uh, just perhaps very possibly represent the raptured, glorified, coronated church of the Lord Jesus, which sing a great song of redemption in all of heaven for all of eternity. And it could be that these crowns that we read about are uh, those that have their crowns and they live in the place prepared for them when they have gone on to be with Jesus. So many, so many verses connect here for me. John 14, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, uh, I learned recently in my study that John 14 is actually uh, referring to the rapture. Jesus said, I will come again and I will receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And so some interpret, uh, just tracking back to verse 1 of Revelation 4, come up here. Some interpret that as the meaning of the rapture of the church. And it could be in verse 4 that these elders and their crowns represent the raptured church as believers are laying their crowns down before the throne of God in the place of heaven that Jesus has prepared for them. By the way, uh, all that matters for eternity is what we will lay at the feet of Jesus. In, In this moment when we are either called to heaven or raptured to heaven, all that that God has given us to live on the face of the earth. All that will matter in that moment 
is those things that we lay at the feet of Jesus. All of those, uh, all of those life circumstances of faith, when we trust at God more than we trust at circumstances, we will lay those acts of faith at the feet of Jesus. All of those times that you believed God when you were on your knees in prayer for your children and those prayers of faith that you prayed in faith, we will lay those prayers of faith at the feet of Jesus. All of those things that we have done for Jesus, we will lay at His feet. I pray today that we will not be lacking with what we will lay before the throne of God as is demonstrated by these elders in verse 4. Notice verse 5 uh, speaks to us about what happens from the throne of God. Look at verse 5. Out from the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And so from the throne, this is important, by the way, John sees these flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. By the way, how many of you have felt or heard an earthquake over the past six months? Anybody? There? I mean, I don't know what's happening in the big city of Elgin out there, but somebody might want to start living right. I mean, multiple earthquakes. I, I missed every one. I've read about them on social media. Uh, been very disappointed that I've missed them. Uh, my wife felt one back in December. Many of you said that you felt that. I mean, just, just the last one here a week or so ago, I was up late studying, and I heard this rumble in the distance, a sound I've never heard before in my life at about 1.30 a.m. And maybe that is a preview of what we read in verse 5, these sounds and peals of thunder. And what verse 5 is really telling us is that John is seeing in this vision, it is a preview of the divine fury that is about to burst open on a sinful world. And Revelation 6 and beyond gives us so many details of how God's judgment will come to the earth. And so Verse 5 is a preview of that. The rumbles of heaven are getting ready for what it is God is going to do through His judgment. Notice verse 6 tells us uh, before the throne. And here we read about the seven spirits of God. And if you've ever wondered what does the Bible mean when it talks about the seven spirits of God at the end of verse 5, we read about this lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Very simply, this reminds us of the perfection of the Holy Spirit in all of His fullness. We talked about this earlier in our study of Revelation 1, but to remind you, the seven spirits of God is, is symbolic for the perfection of the Holy Spirit involving uh, the wisdom of God's Spirit. Aren't you glad God is all wise and when we need wisdom, we can ask Him? It involves the understanding of God's Spirit, the counsel of God's Spirit. God's Spirit has the perfect words for you, the perfect wisdom, the perfect comfort, the strength of the Holy Spirit, the knowledge, the reverence, and the deity of the Holy Spirit. And John sees this before the throne, reminding us of the perfect Trinity of God. God, three persons in one. Notice with me in closing today, not only have we seen on the throne, around the throne, from the throne, before the throne, 
But verses 6 and 8 tell us a glimpse of what is happening in and around the throne. Again, I refer you back to Ezekiel chapter 1 for another picture of this. Uh, But we read in verses 6 through 8, uh, we've got the sea of glass like crystal, the four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. Verse 7. The first creature was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third like a face of that of a man, the fourth was like a flying eagle. And notice verse 8 where we will close our time today. The four living creatures, each one of them, and if you notice this, the Bible is clear to say that they have six wings. They are full of eyes around and within. And day and night, they do not cease to praise the Lord. And so Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 15 identifies these four living beings. Uh, Ezekiel tells us about these. And they are cherubim, uh, which are an exalted order of angels who are frequently associated in, in the Bible with God's holy power. And if you notice, uh, these four living creatures, they are deeply involved with the judgments of God that are to come. And so we will see more about them in Revelation 6. But if you notice that they have six wings, they have six wings, and the scripture tells us With two wings, they have covered their faces. This tells us that even the most exalted created beings cannot look upon the unveiled glory of God. I mean, if even the exalted beings of heaven cover their faces with two of their wings, four of the six wings are related to worship. And what we find as we close in verse 8, that these beings, for them, worship is their privilege, their calling, and their permanent occupation. And guess what, friends? Guess what we will do in heaven? We will join with them as we worship the Lord day and night. Can you imagine all, all of your worries being gone? All of your stresses being gone. And the focus from from here for all eternity is that we will worship day and night. And along with these exalted beings in heaven, we too will declare, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. So let me ask you today. Are you ready to stand before God's throne? If today were to be your final and last breath, are you ready to stand before God's throne? We, as we close the day, uh, we want to lift up the family of Randy, Derek. Um, Fred just gave me word that Randy passed. And Joe was telling me before the service, I don't think it'll be long for Randy. I'm so glad, Joe, that your brother has faith in Jesus. And what we've just spent the last 20 minutes talking about, Randy has taken his last breath. And it could very well be that he is seeing firsthand all of this that we've just read about. All of this that we've just looked about. Are you ready to stand before God's throne? I invite you today to have the assurance in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord so that whether it's today or tomorrow or 10 years from now, so that you are ready, fully confident to stand before the throne of God in perfect righteousness because of the works that Jesus has done on your behalf. Would you bow with me as we pray together? And our Father, today we do bow before your throne. Father, we know one day we will stand before your throne. 
Father, we, we know one day as believers we will lay everything of faith at your feet. And Father, I pray today that our, that our works of faith and of trust will be greater than any other works that we can, can, um, can do while we have time on this earth. Father, we pause, pause now and we pray for Randy's family. We pray as, um, as they've received the news of his passing, Lord, we pray that the great Holy Spirit would comfort each of them. We pray for Joe and Sharon and, and, um, and all of the family, Lord, today. We lift them up to you. We thank you for the presence of God that, is, that we read about in the throne of heaven. And through the Holy Spirit, we can experience the same presence in our lives today. Father, help us be ready to stand before your throne, for the day is coming. Father, help us do what we can to spread the good news of Jesus Christ so that others can be ready to stand before your glorious throne, for the day is coming. Father, as we sing together this hymn, I stand amazed in the presence. Would you draw us near to us? Would you help us with the assurance to know that we are ready beyond a shadow of a doubt to stand before your throne in heaven? As we sing, would you be present with us? And we ask in Jesus' name and all of God's people said together, amen. I'll be at the front to greet you. If you need to come, please come. Would you stand as we sing together? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall sympathies are with you and your family our prayers will be with all of you um, I know Joe shared with me the service for Randy will be held here at a later time and so we'll get word out about that um, but you all have our prayers and our sympathy um, let me leave you with this benediction and I invite you to stay for Sunday school following the service but our benediction today Revelation 4 verse 11 worthy are you our Lord and our God to receive glory and honor and power 
For you created all things, and because of your will, they existed and were created. May God bless you today. Thank you so much for being with us this morning.